Hi everyone, Neil Wilcoxon here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a piece of software called LightZone, which is an open source alternative to Adobe's Lightroom. And the reason why I'm looking into this software is because Adobe charges a monthly subscription fee. I was getting the student discount, but even then it's still pretty expensive. So I'm basically looking into different pieces of software and seeing if they can replace Adobe products so that perhaps I can ditch that subscription fee going into the future. So let's go ahead and take a look and see just how different this software is from Lightroom. One of the first things you'll notice when you're looking at the LightZone website is that it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, that's great because Lightroom is only available for Windows and Mac and opening up to Linux really expands the possibilities for a lot of people. Uh, I'm still staying on Windows because of <coughs> Sony Vegas, but um, in the future I'd certainly consider moving over, especially since a lot of the software now is available for Linux. So now let's go ahead and open up the software and see what some of the differences are. You'll notice that it opens pretty quick, um, about the same speed as Lightroom, maybe a little bit slower. One of the main differences you'll notice is in how the files are organized within the program. In Lightroom, you have to import your files into the catalog and then all your edits will be saved in this large Lightroom catalog folder. That is not true with LightZone. In LightZone, you navigate to the photos directly, there's no import needed, and you look at them here in the program. Now, a limitation that that provides is that you need to store your edits somewhere. And just like Lightroom, LightZone avoids modifying the original files. So what you'll find in the folder with your original images is these new files, and they're called LightZone files. They're JPEGs, and they're usually lower resolution than the original image. Um, I was editing this set of photos with it set on full resolution, but what I actually realized afterwards is that what LightZone is doing is saving all your edit information to this JPEG file. Now it's a normal JPEG file. You can open it up with an image editor, of another sort, or um, Earth and View in this case. But where the power really comes into play is when you open these files up with LightZone. Something that you should know is that when you're in here navigating your folder, by default this box right here will be unchecked and you'll see all these files. You'll be like, okay, this is a LightZone file, this is a RAW file, uh, there's JPEG files flying all over the place. So if you click this stack button, it'll stack them together and put the LightZone file on top. Now what happens when you open the LightZone file is LightZone has written some special information in there to tell it that this is just a reference to that original file with some edits applied to it. So when I edit this image right here, what will happen is I can make my edits and then when I either hit done here or go back to browse, those changes will be saved out to the LightZone file and the original file will be left unmodified. Now you do need both files to open the image back up later but there is an export process, which I'll show you in a minute. So let me go ahead and show you the settings for those light zone files that I was talking about a minute ago. We'll go to edit preferences and then go over to save. And this right here is save light zone file as JPEG. I'm leaving it on JPEG. You could use TIFF. Um, that would just take up more space. And you can also choose to resize it to a certain size. And basically you can select don't limit but the limitation that that will provide you is when you're switching back and forth between images, it'll have to save the file every time if you've made any edits and it'll take longer if the file is larger. So I've gone ahead and set it on one of the middle settings here. That's been working pretty well for me. And it's really not gonna matter unless you want to open the light zone files with another program, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it like I use Lightroom where I export all the photos as I'm done and that means that it doesn't really matter what you set here because it's gonna be combining those files back together to make a high resolution image anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that and click OK. One of the things you might notice when you're editing photos with LightZone is that when you have a raw file right here and you haven't edited it yet, you'll notice uh, colors are a certain way here and then when you go to edit and the file opens, they'll actually be a little bit different. Uh, the only explanation I could determine for this is that this is the actual raw file interpreting the image and that one before was the JPEG file that is embedded in the raw file. It's not going to affect your final results at all, but it was a side effect that I tended to notice. Something else that you'll notice when you're editing photos is that there aren't as many adjustments over here on the right by default. Of course you get your raw adjustments because you have to do those to develop the photos but all of the other options are actually up here on top on this toolbar and they aren't applied until you add them. So if I wanted to add relight, 
you'll notice that the image changes right away. That's slightly frustrating because if you just wanted to make minor changes, that can sort of get in the way. But of course, you can always scale them back, so that's not a deal breaker. Another thing you'll probably notice while you're editing is there's a lot of controls that either go by a different name or you have to combine multiple controls together to get the same effect that you would get in Lightroom. One such case is with the contrast. There is a slider that says detail that does some of the stuff that contrast would do. And you'll also have to play with all of these other settings to get the same effect. So it's a little more work to figure out, okay, what's the equivalent control of this thing I wanted to do in Lightroom. But overall, you can still get the same result. And once you learn what controls you need to use, it shouldn't put you down that much time at all. Working with the program so far, I haven't come across many features that are flat out missing. I can note a few, but I was able to work around and get the same results, so it's not that big of a deal. One of them being the auto controls, particularly for these exposure settings on the raw adjustments. Um, not that I was entirely dependent on that, but it is good to get a starting point on a photo that's really out of whack. Another thing would be auto again on the contrast. Uh, that just wasn't present. You can use the eyedropper here, but that's a little bit different, especially if you don't have anything white in your photo. Some other missing features are the tie-ins to Photoshop, and the primary things I used those for were panoramas and HDR shots. Uh, it's certainly possible to throw photos over to another editor to get that job done, but missing the direct tie-in does add a little bit more time, so if you're a heavy user of those features, that should definitely be noted. As we take a look at this software, you should be aware of a few errors that I've received over the course of using it. Uh, they're actually pretty difficult to recreate, so I'm not gonna be able to do all of them in this video, but I do have a few. So the first one would be when trying to open up a photo, you would actually, instead of opening the photo like is going to happen right now, uh, you'd actually get an error message before you even get into this view. And basically I determined that that had something to do with the memory getting full because this program isn't great at memory management and you would have to close the program and reopen it again. Of course, it does open pretty quick, so that's about a 30 second loss there, but it is kind of inconvenient. Another error that I ran into was from Windows, again, relating to memory. Uh, this one was a little bit more fatal, but it never caused me to lose any work. I assume it's possible, but it did give you a minute to save whatever you're working on before I decided to just give up on the program. Another error that I saw was like this one here, and it's basically upon opening the program, closing it, and then opening it again, it would say, light zone did not open properly last time. And I said, yes it did, go away. And this error actually didn't cause any problems, it was just frustrating, especially in trying to record this video. So before I close out this video, I would like to share a few details about the export process. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the photos I'd like to export here. And this view actually is pretty nice, although it's not as useful if you select a bunch of photos. And the export button we're looking for here is this convert button right here. So it's basically just gonna save these out to the hard drive as standard JPEG or whatever format you pick. Um, this is pretty similar to Lightroom, although the options are in different places. So we're gonna choose the folder first, and I'm just gonna pick the desktop if that's available. and hit save. And now you have your batch name, which I finally figured this out, and what it is is what is getting appended to your file name. So it's similar to Lightroom, although a little more limited. Um, I just put edit in there so I know it's a edited file rather than the original JPEG. Save format, JPEG or TIFF, I'm gonna go with JPEG. Color profile, I'm leaving that default. Resize, don't limit. And quality, I did 90%, it really depends on whether you're doing it for archive purposes or web or whatever. And pixels per inch, it's, it's there, it's an option. Uh, 300 seems to be the standard. And when you click start, you'll have this window open that shows its process. Uh, when there's a lot of files, this did seem to take a while. And unfortunately, when I did a huge number of files, around 50, uh, it failed about halfway through. The files that were exported were fine and I just had to start over. Again, I think it's related to that memory issue and chances are by the time you watch this video and download the software, uh, it'll be fixed in the new version. So I wouldn't hold that against it because the software does get updated. So now that we're done with the export process, we actually don't get as good of a confirmation message as I would like, 
but if it says five of five files processed or whatever your number of files is and zero seconds remaining, that means it's done. So we can go ahead and click done. And what it really comes down to is getting the same result as we got when I was using Lightroom. We'll go to the folder here. We have our images, the right quality, JPEGs. They have edit in the file name, just the same way I've done in Lightroom. And really the only difference was it took a little bit longer to export. Now that's unfortunate and there are some errors occasionally but they're non-destructive errors and for a free piece of software that's going to get updated eventually, I'm a little bit more willing to deal with that. Overall, I found LightZone to be quite functional and there are a few features that I like even better than Lightroom. There are a few drawbacks, but I'm willing to live with them. So let me know down in the comments what your favorite photo editing software is and I'll see you guys again soon in the next video.